Right, daguerreotype is um, an image formed on a sheet of silver plated copper. If you were to put this on the wheel without heating it up first, the rouge on the wheel would stick to the plate immediately and uh, it would be a real problem. I highly recommend getting everything set in your mind about what you're going to do. Do it, get to this wheel here and get out. So you want to start a little bit below the top and then when you get down to the bottom make sure you really roll off the bottom edge like you know like that so that you get that bottom edge because you're not going to get it when you're at the top. Then you turn it over 180 degrees, do top, work your way down, turn it 180 degrees, top, work your way down. Then you go to this wheel, same direction, don't change direction for this wheel and don't add any rouge. Start at the top and done. So you blow off the, the rouge. There's a solid slide that should always be in there when it's not being sensitized. So what you do is, you know, when you're going to sensitize, you take this out and you stick it in here and then you use that to put the plate in, you pull it out, and then when you're done, always put this back in there. And try not to jostle the uh, box too much because those little beads will roll around again. Okay. It's face down and the fumes rise, so that's the idea. What happens now is the iodine is reacting with the silver and it's propagating uh, the development of silver iodide crystals on the surface. And that's, uh, that's what's sensitive to light. Put the plate back in the box for about five seconds because the viewing of the plate obviously would expose it. Um, so in order to free it and to restore it to its uh, unexposed state, you put it back into the box and uh, that converts any of the uh, latent image particles back to uh, silver salts. Okay. So let, let's uh, make an exposure. Mm-hmm. That's eight, ten. Okay. Bearing in mind that the um, dynamic range is only one and a half stops, I'll take a look at what's, what I want to be white, and then I'll take a look at what I need to have detail as well. Mm -hmm. And if that's a stop and a half darker, then I have to start thinking that the white is going to have to solarize in order to get that uh, mm -hmm. information. <laughs> All right, let's go. What I'm doing is I'm taping the plate face down onto the card opposite the amber lith. And of course, I'm sealing it so that no light will get around the edges. So let's go put this out in the sun. See what you do is you make your first, you make your exposure using the actinic rays and then you uh, use this filter to filter out the actinic rays and to concentrate the continuating rays on the plate and that makes the development occur. In about 10 minutes we'll have a good sense of um, the image will be able to reflect a dark field in it and get a pretty good look at you know the general tonalities. We'll be able to tell um, what areas are going to be solarized, uh, what areas are going to probably be black. Unless it's very overexposed, anything less than 30 minutes will um, be very dark because the plate's very easy to scratch. So, and then you take it off. 
So then you, uh, the classic kind of tilt the tray up, get a dry spot, put the, put the plate down, and then drop the plate. And then just rock it back and forth. I usually say about 40 seconds. And you got to move the flame around like this. Think of it kind of like spray painting or whatever. But you want to create a chemical reaction on the plate. I should be counting, you know, I usually go f like for about 180 seconds. The silver of the plate will take on an obvious sort of amber tone. You'll notice where the plate's dry and where it's wet, how the color of the plate will shift from this kind of white silver to a warmer silver. And then you keep an eye out for any possible staining. Another thing you look for, you know, under ideal lighting situations, you can monitor fairly closely, is the plate gets darker and then it becomes, begins to get brighter. So I'm going to stop here just for the hell of it. And then you uh, put it in distilled water and then we'll uh, dry it with a hair dryer. And I tilt it so that the water has a gravitational inclination to run off the plate. I start at the brightest part of the plate and I run to the darkest. You're going to probably want to get a higher power hair dryer. But it should dry really quick. Uh, but you can see it's got a bluish tone, tone to it. But I always try to underdevelop rather than over because uh, I like the blacks to be really nice and black. And that's how you make a daguerreotype.